Welcome to our new series, How to LS Swap. The reason we started this new series is because we wanted everybody to be able to do their own swaps. We wanted you to be able to go out there and get your projects running. So, in this series, I'm going to go over everything starting with how to identify what engine you have. This video is going to be about the Gen 3 engines. We'll go over the rest of them later on in some future videos. I will go over the differences in a true LS and a Vortec like was found in the trucks. For the true LS, it will have aluminum block with the exception of the aluminum 5.3 that came in the Trailblazers, Envoy, and the 05, 06, Z71 trucks. The first LS was the LS1. Uh, it was in the 1997 Camaro. The that was followed by the 485360 and the Vortex trucks. <clears throat> then in 2001, LS6 was offered, and it ended in 2005. Then we get to the tricky LS2. The LS2 is both a third gen and a fourth gen. It was, it was offered in 2005 that had a 24X reluctor in 2000, all the way up until 2006 when it went to a 58X. Now that we got the timeline down, let's get started with some of the identifiers to look for. The LS1 is going to be aluminum block 5.7. They made 345 horsepower for the Corvettes and 305 horsepower for the F-body cars, Camaros, Firebirds. The stroke is 3.62 and the bore is a 3.89, making it 346 cubic inches. The LS1 came with a couple sets of heads, the early perimeter bolt head, the 933 and the 806. Then we have the more common 241. These heads have a 66.67 cc combustion chamber with a 2 inch intake and a 155 exhaust valve. Next, the LS6. The LS6 had the same bore and stroke as the LS1. For the LS6, the only real difference are the heads. <clears throat> the heads have a 243 casting number. They are sodium filled titanium valves. This makes the valve train lighter. The cam specs is different, but I don't have that info. Um, I will find it and put it up here. And then, of course, most of, your, most of you've heard of the LS6 intake. I will go over the LS6 intake later on in the video when I cover all the different intakes. But now, the most common engine, the Vortec. Um, they came in the trucks and SUVs, 4853 and 6 O's. These are going to be cast iron blocks. This is what most of your swaps out there are going to be. I know nobody wants to have the smaller 4.8, but the price difference, you're not giving up very much power compared to the 5.3. The 4.8 horsepower rating was between 270 and 290 and, uh, horsepower and 285 and three, between 285 and three on the foot pounds of torque. 5.3 came in at 270. Um, to about 315 on the torque. That's not that big of a difference when you're picking it up for almost half the price. Now, telling a 4853 uh, might be difficult. First thing you can look at is behind the water pump, I'll put a picture up, um, there will be casting marks and sometimes a paint mark on which one. It'll say 48 or 53 and have a little paint mark. Second thing you can do is use a boroscope and look inside the spark plug hole if it has a flat top piston, it's a 4.8. Um, now, if it's a dish piston, sometimes it'll have a little cross on it. I'll put a picture up. Um, then you'll have a 5.3. But this is not a for sure way to tell them apart. Like I said, there's some varies in years and stuff. The last thing to do is check the crank casting number. I'll put where to find that right here. If you have the part number 12553482, that is a 4.8 crank. If you have the part number 12552216, there's a 3.622 stroke, which is a 5.3 crank. The 4853 uses the same bore and a different stroke. The bore is 3.7800. Now it's time for the big 60. I know you guys have seen the videos and read stories of people making a bunch of horsepower. So let's get into the most common variations of the LQ4 and the LQ9. The LQ4 was produced to make between 300 and 330 horsepower with 360, 370 foot-pounds of torque. LQ9 came at 345 horsepower with 380 foot-pounds of torque. The LQ9 also came with a flat-top piston, giving it a compression ratio of 
The LQ9 had connecting rods that are similar to the Gen 4s and a little bit stronger. The LQ4 had a disc piston that gave it a compression ratio of 9 to 4 to 1. Both engines have the same bore size of 4 inch, or 4 inch bore. <clears throat> the 6L also shares the same crankshaft as the 5.3 and 5.7 with a 3.622 stroke. Both the LQ4 and LQ9 can be found with 317 heads, except for the early LQ4s from 99 to 2000 will have an 873 cast iron head. Okay, <laughs> a lot of information. Now on to the intakes. We'll start with the LS1 and the LS6. The runner design of the LS6 intake manifold has a different runner design compared to the LS1 intake. The LS6 intake has a straighter and larger intake runners, which allows for improved airflow, increasing horsepower at higher RPMs. This design differs, contributes to the LS6 intakes um, and is a great upgrade for from the LS1. The LS intake manifold has a slightly smaller plenum volume compared to the LS1 intake. The LS1 smaller plenum volume can help improve the throttle response on low end torque. LS6 intake manifolds do not have provisions for the EGR systems, while some of the LS1s do, that'd be that big hole on the side. Um, that's an easy way to tell them apart. Overall, the differences of the LS1 and the LS6 intake manifolds are mainly in their construction, the runner design, um, that all has to do with the carrier's carrier sticks. Uh, the LS6 is often considered an upgrade over the LS1, like I just said, um, it, but it's more at a higher RPM uh, where you'll see that difference because of the plenum. The LS truck intakes offer, often offer a design with the longer intake runners compared to the LS1 or the LS6. The longer runners optimize the low end torque and throttle response, which is beneficial for trucks for towing and heavy load stuff like that. The plenum volume of the truck intake is generally larger compared to the, the performance intakes. The larger plenum contributes to the improved low end bottom, the low bottom end torque. Um, like I said, for, for heavy loads and you know, trucks are about twice the weight. Um, all of your LS1, LS6 intakes will be plastic, um, and the nice thing about that is it does keep the heat soak down and keep your intake air temperatures down. Accessory drives. There are three different style accessory drives. There's going to be the Corvette, the Camaro, and the, uh, the Camaro or F body, which is going to be the same, and then truck. The Corvette will have the shortest, the smallest offset, so it'll be fit in smaller spaces of 1.5. The Camaro F body with an offset of 2.25. The truck at a larger offset of 3, so that's going to be fitting way out there. Now we have covered the basics of the Gen 3 platform. We can go over the interchangeable parts. Between the LS and the Vortec, pretty much all the parts are interchangeable. You can put LS1 heads and intakes on the Vortec engines. The accessory drives you have to make sure that you use the same accessory drives. So LS1 with LS1, F body, truck, you know, all the bracketry has to be the same. Now, we'll become a little bit more tricky when we get to the Gen 4 platform. There's still gonna be a lot of interchangeable parts between the Gen 3 and Gen 4. I'll go over those in another video, but just for now, just know to keep with the Gen 3. I know there's probably some things that I forgot to mention, but there will be a separate video going over some of the other stuff because there's a lot of details to be covered. If there's something that you want explained or you think there's something that I should have covered in this video, please leave it in the comments. Like I said earlier, guys, this is going to be a whole series of videos explaining LS stuff and LS swaps. Um, again, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe, click the notification button to make sure to get notifications when we release another one of these videos. Thanks guys.